Oh, you wow. Could? What do you got? Uh, we've been watching this one all day long. A massive signing okay. has oh. taken place in the NFL. Whoa, slow down. Geez, slow down, NFL. Oh, my God. NFL free agency 2024 is underway. Today through Wednesday is the tampering period, which is like foreplay. But you're not allowed to climax officially until Wednesday. Teams and players have 48 hours to agree to deals before the new league year starts on Wednesday. And we've had huge moves already. Rust to the Steelers. Big Kirkos going to the Falcons. Baker Mayfield signed a big deal to return to Tampa. Today, I'm going to update you on as many key signings as I can. And come Wednesday or Thursday, I'll have the official winners and losers, losers of free agency to provide a better, bigger overall picture of what went down. Until then, I'll try not and drown in what is just an onslaught of signings. It feels like more signings are happening more quickly this period than ever. Let's begin with the Packers, who released five-time All-Pro left tackle David Bakhtiari after three injury-riddled seasons. I feel for David, who has gone through hell trying to get his knee right after tearing his ACL uh, December 31st to 2020. Since then, he's only been able to play in 13 games. If healthy, though, someone is getting a great tackle. Oh yeah, he's a Jet. He's more of a Jet than Riff from a West Side Story. When you're a Jet, you stay. Oh, yeah! General Manager Aaron Rodgers is already working the phone. Uh, at least he got to leave a message for Bears fans in his final game as a Packer. Also gone is linebacker Devondre Campbell after three seasons in Green Bay. Now with Campbell and David Bakhtiari gone, the average age of the Packers roster has dropped into the DiCaprio zone at 24.9. Any lower, and they're getting into the Jerry Sandusky zone. The Patriots dealt Mac Jones to the Maxonville Macwars, where he will back up Trevor Lawrence, uh, the same quarterback that went 14 picks before him in the 2021 NFL Draft. This move makes a lot of sense for Jones in two ways. First, uh, he was born in Jacksonville, and most importantly because he's not good enough to start in the NFL. The Jaguars continue to bolster their offense, signing former Bills wide receiver Gabe Davis to a three-year deal who should be a great complement on the other side of Christian Kirk. This should help ease the loss of Calvin Ridley for Trevor Lawrence in the passing game. One of the biggest free agents, Christian Wilkins has a new home in Las Vegas? Wait, what? Fuck, no, no, no! The Raiders got aggressive and added one of the top free agents this offseason, former Dolphins defensive tackle Christian Wilkins, who is about to make blocking Max Crosby for opponents a hell of a lot harder. Wilkins joins the Raiders on a four-year deal worth $110 million. I don't like that this makes the Raiders a lot better. But I do like the idea that Wilkins goes from notoriously, relentlessly grabbing Josh Allen's dick and balls to presumably doing the same to Patrick Mahomes. Let's see how many Super Bowls Mahomes wins after getting sexually accosted twice a year, unless his brother's already been doing that to him. Mahomes has overcome a dislocated knee, a high ankle sprain, but uh, is he gonna be able to sling it after having his testicles disintegrated? And I don't even want to imagine what Mahomes' voice would sound like without testicles. It, it's something that I, I've kind of embraced. Oh, <laughs> sorry, didn't see you there. Today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash good sports. Men, if you don't want to become free agents, single, or if you are a free agent and want to attract the right team, man or woman, you better look your best. And while pew maintenance is important, I'm talking about the hair that needs to be kempt for your first impression. Your face, your silly face. Two of my favorite tools are the beard hedger and the handyman. Two inventions so powerful, Christopher Nolan is thinking about making a film about them. I love the Beard Hedger, and honestly, I use it more than any other Manscaped trimmer. It's got a titanium-coated stainless steel T-blade to hedge those thick-ass beard hairs with ease. The built-in zoom wheel adjusts to 20 different levels for whatever beard length you desire. It's perfect, and the Handyman is tremendous. It's a compact face shaver, which admittedly, I only use on my neck, but 
but provides a great smooth electric shave that's also perfect for traveling. Both are waterproof, which makes rinsing to clean them no problem at all. So you know the drill, use my link below, manscaped.com slash goodsports for 20% off plus free international shipping with my link and my link only. For all Bills fans out there, I'd like to officially say screw you to Dion Dawkins, who performed the worst free agency prank ever. Before announcing that he signed a three-year extension, he teased that he was leaving Buffalo and showing his allegiance to ranch dressing. Dawkins will actually return for $60.5 million to make sure Josh Allen and the Bills lose to the Chiefs again in the playoffs. Sorry, Buffalo. Sorry, I don't know why I'm hurting you, Buffalo. Just beat him. Beat him. The Buccaneers have rewarded Baker Ott Mayfield and his renaissance season with a three-year deal worth $100 million. Really, is 40. That's roughly $1 million more than what Tom Brady made in his three years in Tampa, proving once and for all what actual teams think of the so-called GOAT. After being traded mid-season from Tennessee to Philly and recently getting cut by the Eagles, former All-Pro safety Kevin Byard has found a new home in Chicago, signing a two-year $15 million deal with the Bears. But Chicago wasn't done. They also signed running back DeAndre Swift, another former Philly Eagle. This was uh, Swift was actually the first signing in free agency, and with Justin Fields presumably leaving, the Bears were in need of a running back. If last offseason taught me anything, it was that I was way too high on Swift. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I think he's a solid running back, but seeing both the Lions and the Eagles move on from Swift makes me think the Bears are probably overpaying for his services. Swift played behind two of the best offensive lines in the NFL and now goes to a middling at best line in Chicago. I think the Green Bay Packers made the stronger move in signing running back Josh Jacobs. I didn't mean to get that excited. I was trying to hold in a burp. As a Broncos fan, Josh Jacobs has made my life hell. So congratulations on getting better, Green Bay. It looks like the pack uh, got a new deal done with Aaron Jones as well, so I believe Green Bay will now have the best running back tandem in the league. Their biggest problem might be getting both of those guys enough touches, is what I would have said had contract talks between Aaron Jones and the Packers not broken down just a couple hours later. And I know this sucks for Packers fans. Everybody loves Aaron Jones, but this probably makes way more sense. And I predict Aaron Jones goes to the Raiders in a tit-for-tat situation so he can play with his old friend, Devontae Adams. And the Packers weren't done. They had a very splashy day one in free agency, bucking the trend for the normally bland and boring pack. They signed Xavier McKinney to a four-year, $68 million deal. Many believe McKinney was the best safety available based on skill and age. At just 24, he's a good six years younger than most of the safeties that hit the market, and Green Bay addresses one of their biggest needs day one. The Vikings are losing Daniil Hunter, but they signed former Texans pass rusher Jonathan Grenard to a four-year, $76 million deal. Losing Grenard feels like the first thing that hasn't gone the Texans' way since drafting C.J. Stroud. Also leaving Texas, different city, running back Tony Pollard who joins the Titans as they move on from Derrick Henry. After last season, I think we learned that Tony Pollard is best when sharing the workload and the Titans will need to find a nice balance between Pollard and Tajay Spears. The Titans also added a big guy up front to block for Pollard, former Broncos center, Lloyd Cushenberry, who had a breakout season in 2023 and is now cashing in with Tennessee. With Cush gone, there are officially zero players from the Broncos 2020 draft left on the roster. Awesome. The Eagles uh, keep trying to add depth on defense and they signed former Jets pass rusher Bryce Huff to a three-year deal worth 51 mil. This is huge for Huff, who might actually have a chance to play with a lead this year. Huff is coming off a 10-sack season in which he played in like 10 total snaps. That's an exaggeration, but Huff had a pressure rate of 21.3%, second only to Micah Parsons. The question is, will that hold up when he has to play eight to 900 snaps through the course of a season versus the 481 he had with the Jets last year. 
Philly wasn't done as they signed possibly the best running back on the market in, yeah, Saquon Barkley. Oh God, yes, I love you Saquon for going within the division and giving the biggest middle finger to his former team since Russell Wilson agreed to play for the Steelers for $1.2 million. DeAndre Swift was more productive than Barkley last season, but I think we'll see Saquon resume his 2022 and 2018 form behind the Eagles line and approach the 13 to 1,500-yard uh, rushing mark and 10-plus touchdowns. The caveat there being, if the tush push is less effective without Jason Kelsey, Saquon could see a lot of goal line carries and possibly score 20 touchdowns. Geno Stone signed with the Bengals, a two-year $15 million deal. If Xavier McKinney wasn't the best safety available, it was probably former Raven ball hawk Geno Stone. The Bengals get Stone on a very fair two-year deal. Stone led the NFL with seven interceptions last season and now joins every other safety in the NFL by changing teams this offseason. The 49ers signed Leonard Floyd to a two-year deal. Floyd was one of the Bills' most consistent edge rushers last season, and I think just a better player than Chase Young to fill in opposite Nick Bosa for the 49ers. Floyd had 10 and a half sacks, 41 pressures, and returns to the NFC West where he won a Super Bowl with the Rams back in 2022. And then finally, the New York Giants did something and they did something big. The Giants traded with the Panthers for edge rusher Brian Burns, a huge ad for the G-men, and another example of the Panthers' inability to keep talent on their roster. They also lost linebacker Frankie Louvu, the Panthers, New York, though, is giving Burns a new five-year, $150 million deal, and they give Carolina a second and fifth round draft pick in exchange. I love this move for the Giants and for their defensive front. Dexter Lawrence has emerged as one of the best interior defensive players, and adding Burns to the edge opposite the developing Kayvon Thibodeau feels like the first smart thing the Giants have done since starting Tommy DeVito. Now, it wouldn't be a That's Good Sports episode without a diatribe on Russell Wilson. Mike Tomlin lost one hour of sleep during daylight savings and accidentally signed Russell Wilson. Sleep deprivation really is incredibly dangerous. You blink, I'll cut your eyelids off. Don't you blink. I'd like to congratulate Steelers fans for reaching the Russell Wilson might really help us stage of life after a Hall of Fame QB retires. Now you skipped a couple steps. Firing your head coach or head coaches, cycling through a carousel of starting QBs. But as a Broncos fan, I feel for you. And more importantly, I understand you. Yes, I know the Broncos will still be paying 98% of Russ's salary in 2024. Guys, I've known that since last offseason when I made a video about how the Broncos could cut Russell Wilson. The Steelers get a steal. <laughs> paying Russ just that 1.2 mil. I do think Wilson can come in and help Pittsburgh's offense the same way Mason Rudolph did. Wilson's completion percentage will be lower than Rudolph's, his sack percentage much higher, and his touchdown to interception ratio just slightly worse. He's very similar to Mason Rudolph. He's just a lot shorter and has no track record of having Miles Garrett try and murder him. I'm kidding when I say I think Russ is about the same as Mason Rudolph. I, I think I'm kidding, Pittsburgh. He'll be cheaper than Mason Rudolph. There you go, there's the upgrade. I assume Russell Wilson will be a day one starter for the Steelers, but I desperately, I wanna see a full-blown quarterback competition. I genuinely have no idea how Russ would respond to that. Kenny Pickett could be better in Arthur Smith's offense, but I really don't know. Wilson is great with play action, which Arthur Smith loves to run, but Smith also loves his quarterbacks to throw over the middle, something Russ is literally the worst at doing on Earth. All of Earth including Middle Earth. Both Mina Kimes and Nate Tice pointed this out on Twitter. Russ doesn't work over the middle. Tannehill, 12 and a half percent of the time. Matt Ryan, 2021, 15 percent of the time. Milena, 15.3 percent of the time. Just under 12 percent. Russ, 5.8 percent of the time he threw the ball over the middle. <laughs> the best part is, of course, that this 
move sets up a game that will be so catastrophic and personally traumatizing that it's sure to be my most viewed video of 2024. That's right, Russell Wilson and the Steelers are playing in Denver this season. And knowing the schedule makers in their infinite pettiness, it will almost certainly happen week one in prime time and on Elon's Neuralink so it's fed directly into your brain. Not even closing your fucking eyes will prevent you from watching this train wreck. Oh, make it stop. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, wait, are we winning? Because we're playing again. No, Russ is killing us. Russ is killing us. In other massive QB news, Kirk Cousins abandons the team that literally gave him all the money he ever wanted. My question for Vikings fans is, how are you doing? Since he's been gone. With Cousins' affinity for singing and dancing and stripping, I'm really surprised he didn't land in Las Vegas. Instead, he's going to the NFC South. Now, Kirk Cousins' wife is from Atlanta. Justin Fields, though, is from Georgia. So now we know the queen of Cole's cash is far more powerful than Justin Fields. No one has been better at maximizing his career earnings than Kirk Cousins, and he just inked a four-year deal with Atlanta worth $180 million, including a $50 million signing bonus and $100 million guaranteed. That's right, Kirk is set to make more in career earnings than Tom Brady. Not bad for a quarterback with one playoff win. One playoff win. Look, Kirk's a good QB, but his bank breaking? is as perplexing as Pete Davidson's elite dating life. Fortunately for Kirk, Atlanta is getting a massive upgrade with him at the position. Kirk now finds himself in an offense also loaded with tons of young talent and a division ripe for the taking, one they almost certainly would have won last year if they had a quarterback not named Desmond Ritter or Taylor Heineke. Kyle Pitts just made himself a lot of money thanks to this signing. Drake London now has a chance to reach his full potential as a true wide receiver one, and Bijan Robinson isn't going to be running into an eight-man box every single play. Obviously, the elephant in the room is the health of Kirk's Achilles, which he tore in the first half of the season, ending one of the most promising campaigns of his 12-year career. He's 36 years old, and yet I feel like his goal is to get one more insane contract when he turns 40. And I believe he can do it. And no, I don't believe that will be in Atlanta for a second. So Kirk Cousins took Justin Fields' job in Atlanta and then Gardner Minshew snuck in and stole Justin Fields' gig in Las Vegas. I hate to say it, but the Raiders may have flat out won free agency by signing quarterback Gardner Minshew to compete with Aiden O'Connell for the starting job. There was only one veteran QB I was willing to accept in Denver, and that was Gardner Minshew. At this very moment, I have zero desire to watch football in 2024. Gardner Minshew is working on his own version of Manifest Destiny through the NFL right now. Emphasis on man. He started in Jacksonville, moved north to Philly, spent a year in the Midwest where he quietly kept the Colts competitive last season, and now he's gone west to Las Vegas. Part of why I hate this deal is because Minshew is so flexible. Want him to hold the clipboard? He'll hold it better than anyone. Want him to start a few games? He'll probably end up winning most of them. Need him to take over after an injury? Shit, he might play better than the starter and he'll look better and cut off jean shorts. Right now, it's him and Aiden O'Connell, a battle between the sexiest mustache in the league and the mustache most likely to pull you over after having a broken taillight. Gimme Minshew in that tug of war. Also, Max Crosby can no longer call him Lil Ass Boy. He just calls, he keeps calling everybody Lil Ass Boy. But here's why I'm realistically concerned. What this signals more than anything to me is that the Raiders didn't want to take a swing on a guy like Justin Fields. Instead, they got the human Swiss army knife at QB, which still keeps them open to drafting a quarterback at pick 13 or potentially moving up. And whatever quarterback they do pick gets to learn from one of the most experienced journeymen in the game right now.
So Minshew gets a two-year, $25 million deal from the Raiders, 15 guaranteed. Not exactly starter money and more than a typical backup's going to make. You can pretty much guarantee that he'll start games, but they didn't go as far as to overpay him. I truly hate that I can see the Raiders getting smarter since Tom Telesco took over as their GM. If he doesn't carry over the injury luck from the Chargers, he might end up looking like a top front office mind pretty soon. And I mentioned that Minshew was quietly solid last year and maybe not so quiet because the voters rewarded him with an all too well deserved Pro Bowl bid. Last year he had more passing yards than Russell Wilson in just 13 starts, had a winning record with the first time head coach and came within a drop pass of beating out the Texans for the AFC South title in week 18. The Raiders are a better more flexible team with Minshew which is why this signing pains me so much on multiple levels. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports, free agency frenzy, day one edition. Again, we'll have a, uh, an overview, biggest winners and losers of free agency in the next couple days, probably a video tomorrow, so keep coming back.